Welcome to One Way to Machines. Today we'll be doing a wheel changeover on a 2017 Honda Civic base model. For those of you only interested in the wheel change, you can sign off of the video after the torque specs. This particular vehicle is going to be returned as a lease return. So in the time that we have with the vehicle, we'll also do a very brief review. The front jacking point for this vehicle is about a foot and a half behind the front emblem of the car underneath. We're going to go underneath the car and show you guys where it is. As you can see, this car has a giant plastic cover underneath. And we don't want to take extra steps and have to remove it. So we're only going to use the side jacking points for this job. If you do decide to remove the plastic cover, there is a place on the front cross member that you can jack the car up to get both wheels out of the air. At that point you can put the vehicle on jack stands and then you can change both tires while jacking the car once. The way we're going to do it is we're going to go to each corner and lift the car up and change each wheel. Never go under a vehicle that is only supported by a jack. You need jack stands for that. For this particular project you just need to jack it up, get the wheel off and then continue. Roll your floor jack into position and lift the car. Before you lift the car you want to break the lug nuts loose and for that you're going to need a 19 millimeter deep socket and a half inch breaker bar. Just make sure the deep socket that you buy is a half inch drive. Break lug nuts loose. Setting the parking brake helps prevent the car rocking when you're breaking the lug nuts loose. Brake lug nuts loose in a general star pattern. Slide your properly weighted floor jack underneath the car and lift the car from its jacking point. Front passenger side jacking point. It's this piece right here. The cup on this particular floor jack does not sit nicely on the factory jacking point. Jacking points are usually reinforced. You could lift the car just fine with this. The car can handle it, but it's not recommended that you do this. And most floor jacks, you can just remove the cup and you can use the square bit underneath there. If you're going to do this though, I recommend you don't go crazy with your wrench trying to tighten the wheels when the car's still in the air as it has a bit more chance of slip than it would with the cup on it. At this point you can use the factory lug nut removal tool that comes in the kit with the car or if you have a half inch drive ratchet you can just put your deep socket on there and quickly get these lug nuts loose. The lug nuts are not tight anymore. In the case that you have a smaller ratchet than this and you have extensions to put your 19 millimeter onto it, you can also use that to loosen the lug nuts at this point. After you've loosened them to a degree, you can just take off the socket and use the socket and remove them quickly by hand. In a future video, we'll cover things that you can do in order to get a wheel that's seized off. In this case, this car is quite new and there isn't much rust, so the wheels came off easily. Get the tire that you're going to change over, put it on, and hand tight the lug nuts. Use your ratchet or factory lug torque wrench and just tighten the wheel lug nuts a little bit more. Any action you perform with the lug nuts is always done in a general star pattern. Lower the car. Tighten the lug nuts one time with the breaker bar. Based on how much you had tightened them before, it might need a second round with the breaker bar. You will be able to feel if it needs a second round when you are tightening. 
For this particular car, you don't need a very heavy duty torque wrench. You can use some of the smaller 3 8 inch drive ones. The one that we're using today has a maximum of 80 foot pounds, which is the torque for this car. So we're going to use that one. If you don't have two 19 millimeter deep sockets, a 3 8 and a half inch, you can get an adapter for your half inch or you can put your 3 8 right on the smaller torque wrench. Adapters look like this and they're usually sold in sets. There are reducers and increasers. This particular adapter is not a reducer like you would need if you only had a half inch drive 19 millimeter. But this is generally what they look like and you can find reducers. They usually come in a pack of four. It's a good tool to have. When it comes to click type torque wrenches, you only want to click them once. You don't want to damage the mechanism inside. They work just like a normal ratchet and you have your foot pounds down here set it to your desired setting this one maxes out at 80 which is where we've set it and you use it by turning the dial either to the right or the left torque lug nuts to 80 foot pounds always store your torque wrenches in the container that they came with as they're delicate tools and you don't want them to be damaged so keep them in their containers store them in a safe place clip on the factory hubcap in the beginning of the video I called this a 2017 it's actually a 2019 doesn't make a difference though this repair applies to all models 2016 to 2021 base model I'm also going to show you guys what the rear jacking point looks like on this car it's located in front of the rear wheel. This here is the jacking point. I won't be filming the entire wheel changeover process as you're just going to repeat everything that you did on the wheel that we covered. So the center console of this car is rugged and sturdy and it won't break with repeated use. There's a lot of hard plastics inside of the interior although it has an upscale but still economy upscale feel with the knobs on the dash and the steering wheel. The Back is comfortable for people up to 5'9", which is still pretty good for a sleek back design sedan. The leg room is also good for most people of that height. In most cases, the dealer should take the car back with these rims on it. But the place that installed the winter tires on these rims had a type of weight on the outside that they can't clip the hubcap back onto. So for this reason, you have to put the original rims back. The dealer needs to be able to sell this car with its original hubcaps on it. In future videos, we'll go over things that you need to know for vehicle leasing. And when it comes time to return your vehicle, as there's many factors that you need to be aware of in order to make the lease experience worth your time and money. The seat fabric feels thin and cheap compared to the 8th generation Civic. The design principles are poor on this car's design in regards to aesthetics. Some people think they look great. This car has more than decent power for an economy car on the highway at legal highway speeds when not loaded with luggage and a maximum of two passengers. Even when fully loaded with luggage and passengers, this car still retains its stability at highway speeds. The rear suspension does not squat as much as the 8th generation Civic would when it was loaded. This car is still great on gas even with the increased weight and size. Trunk space has not been compromised over previous generations even with the sleeker roof line. Getting wider objects in is more difficult though due to new angles on the trunk lid opening. We recommend this car as a good second hand buy.